The 13 duos competing in the fourth edition of the Guide of Bermudes 1000 race, Breast to the Fast Net Rock, and Back to Breast, had, as their Phi IST task, to test their boats in a full on race against the clock. The foilers Euh, d'avoir de, de, le troisième temps, on ne pensait pas faire podium, je t'avoue qu'on a tous un peu appris à gérer un run aussi, on n'était pas forcément calé euh, euh, hyper bien, après ça dépendait un petit peu de, de la session qui était ventée ou pas, il y avait des belles variations sur le, sur le plan d'eau, donc euh, voilà, super content d'avoir pu exploiter le potentiel du bateau. Here are our highlights in the global sport of sailing for the week ended May 12, 2023. The big news from the ocean race was that another Mocha had dismastered leaving the small fleet with only three boats competitive, who could start in leg five across the Atlantic back to Europe. Here is Guide Entertainment's emotional skipper. They certainly have had bad luck in this event. Eh ben, la nuit dernière, aux alentours de 2h40 UTC, euh, moi j'étais hors quart avec Robert et Seb et Annie étaient en quart et on a entendu un gros bam, j'ai vite sorti la tête, j'ai demandé à Seb qu'est-ce qui se passe et il m'a dit ben, « on... désolé ben, on a dématé ». Et voilà, dès que je suis sorti, en effet, j'ai vu que le, le mât était dans l'eau et... et ouais, c'est… Ben, voilà, c'est… C'est dur quoi. Euh, je me suis dit mais non c'est pas possible, pas encore. Euh, pas possible quoi. Et le dur retour à la réalité est en fait que bah, si le mât est bien dans l'eau et que et qu'il faut qu'on se sécurise de cette situation au plus tôt. Donc, euh, donc voilà, c'était vraiment un moment pas facile et je pense que les prochains jours vont être des moments vraiment pas faciles. For the 11 teams, which will race under seven different national flags at this week's 52 Super Series Saint-Tropez Sailing Week, the long months of preparation end today when the first points race of the five regatta 2023 season gets underway on the Côte d'Azur's Gulf of Saint-Tropez. So, bienvenue, a very warm welcome to Saint-Tropez. It's the very first time the 52 Super Series has come to France and to Saint-Tropez. Great week in prospect, 11 boats racing, seven different nations, and it's going to be tight all the way through. So after the first day of racing on the Gulf of Saint-Tropez, well, it's a great uh, opening for the uh, Interlodge team from Rhode Island. Austin and Gwen uh, Fragman's team have only won one race on the circuit back in 2022, but today they came away with two bullets, winning both races, uh, leading all the way around the course first time round. Breeze was quite light, six to eight knots in the first race, and the breeze in the second race dropping away. They got round uh, just inside Vayu on the second race, and I say two wins then for Interlodge, a good day all also for Alpha Plus, third in the first race. Also Vayu coming through in second on the second race. And great racing, nice light conditions, gentle introduction to the season. But Interlodge come away top of the table. It's very hard to win any races, so um, we were particularly pleased with our, um, with our performance today. So after two races then, Interlodge lead with their two bullets getting two points. Prevetsa are in second on seven points and Gladiator third on eight points.
11th hour racing team won leg four of the Ocean Race, leading the fleet into their hometown of Newport, Rhode Island, on a spectacular spring afternoon in New England. Skipper Charlie and Wright was beaming as he stepped ashore, moments after his team held off Team Malaysia to cross the finishing line for their first leg win of the event. This means so much to all of us, in Wright said. Timing is everything, and to be able to get this result, on this leg, coming to our home base in Newport, feels incredible. Everybody on the team played a role and did their part. It feels so good to see all the boats on the water, and the people here on shore to welcome us, and share this with us. We're grateful for the support, and happy we could get the win for everybody. It wasn't an easy leg. Over the 17 days of racing north from Brazil, the teams had to manage numerous transitions between weather systems, from the southern hemisphere trade winds, through the doldrums, and into the North Atlantic trades. A storm just two days out from the finish brought wind gusts over 50 knots, and a brutal sea state, conditions that veteran on board reporter Amory Ross described as terrifying. And through it all, 11th hour racing team and Team Malaysia exchanged the lead over a dozen times before in right and his squad emerged with the win Wednesday afternoon. This was a great race, said Team Malaysia skipper Will Harris. It was close racing, which is something we always like, and it sets us up nicely for the legs ahead. The results today, combined with overall race leader Team Holson PRB having to retire from the leg after dismasting on day four, mean the top three teams on the leaderboard will be within one point when the transatlantic race starts on Sunday the 21st of May. Paul Mailhat's Biotherm crew is still at sea racing towards Newport, with over 150 miles left to run. Their ETA has slipped into Thursday, as the boat is mired in lighter winds. Leg 4 positions, as at 8pm Universal Time, coordinated on Wednesday, the 10th of May 2023. 1. 11th Hour Racing Team 5 points. 2. Team Malaysia 4 points. 3. Biotherm Still Racing. 4. Guide Environment Team Europe, Suspended Racing. 5. Team Holson PRB retired from leg, zero points. Ineos Britannia looked scintillating on Wednesday as the team took to the water with their new slight anhedral, long span, portfoil replete with its barrage of mounted cameras for a superb day of commissioning that will certainly have raised a smile with the design office and data engineers back at Mercedes Applied Science headquarters in Brackley, Northamptonshire. Ladin Mon, you were trimming, doing flight control on the port side of T6 today. T6 back out of the shed after a quite a short upgrade period. What can you tell us about the upgrades? Yeah, it was obviously good to get back out in T6 um, after the last kind of 10 days or so. Um, and yeah, obviously a new foil on that starboard side. Um, so yeah, great to get out on that, um, give it its first, first run out, um, and hopefully a few more days to go this week. Anything about that um, banana foil that you can tell us? I know that you weren't you weren't directly controlling that today, but what's the feeling on off the boat as you uh, as you come ashore tonight? Yeah, I mean it's a, a kind of a concept that we've seen across um, a few of the other teams. Um, so yeah, early days for sure for us. Um, very much kind of a commissioning day, really, to be honest. Uh, making sure that it's kind of. Um, Kind of actuating and everything as expected um, and we'll have to look at the data tonight and see see what we can see from it. Any issues with the boat technically today? It's just just come out of the shed or was everything good? No, it was a bit of a slow start um, but most of that was just kind of checking that everything was functioning as expected. Um, we then got into the towing um, behind Chase 4 and then pretty, pretty quickly after that we were into kind of sails up and, and got some sailing hours in. Do you, can you share anything with us about the thinking behind, just in general terms, of, of this curved foil? Is it, is it aimed at the Barcelona conditions where it might be a bit more forgiving in a seaway? Yeah, I mean, we, we obviously saw the Kiwis last time around with a slight curve into their foil, um, and it seems like most teams uh, are kind of leaning that way. Um, the challenge is obviously choosing kind of where to, where to stick the junction um, and how confident you are with, with that in a sea state. 
Um, so we've, we've obviously seen yeah, a few variations across the teams, um, and hopefully over the next kind of few weeks we'll, we'll kind of draw our own, our own kind of conclusions from it. We saw again that kind of splash that we saw with the W fall, which I think is a function of the, the height of that junction. Is, is am I correct? Yeah, I mean, often you get a bit of a splash if you get quite a big vent, um, and I guess as our kind of control refines, and obviously particularly in harder sea states, um, they potentially become a bit more frequent. Um, but um, yeah, not not desirable. Just talk us through the conditions today. Started off pretty light as you were doing your tow testing, and then built quite nicely, didn't it? Yeah, it did. It was it was quite light to start with. Um, a bit of a, a bit of a sea state still, so we kind of took ourselves away up the coast. Um, and then, and then, yeah, the breeze came in uh, again. It was it was quite a, a strange day in a way, not like a classic sea breeze day. Um, but yeah, eventually we kind of got up to kind of 12, 11, 12 knots. Um, so it was quite nice. You said you're going to have to look at the data for tonight. What's your general consensus? A good day on the water? Has the boat just come out of the shed? Yeah, I think pretty happy. Um, to be honest, having had a day, uh, kind of ha having had um, kind of a week and a bit in the shed to get out of the water and it to be kind of working as expected um, is, is pretty happy. Fantastic. Thanks for sharing that with us. No worries. Thank you so much. Thanks. The second day of racing at Antigua Sailing Week was blessed with fabulous sailing conditions. The trade winds were in, gusting up to 17 knots from the east. With over a meter of ocean swell and an air temperature in the high 20s centigrade, it was a marvelous day to be out racing at the Caribbean's most famous regatta. Last year, Antigua Sailing Week was my first experience, even with um, the Y2K uh, program. I was on a Volvo 70, so it was big, exciting, because I was a first-time sailor. It brought opportunities, big opportunities. What am I enjoying about this year? Is that I have more of my friends came out, because I begged them, so to say, to come out and try it, because last year, it was um, big. So this year, I want them to experience the same thing I did. Now, they're experiencing it, and they love it. So I'm glad for that. Me and my brother asked my dad, and he was hesitant at first because of a bunch of kids, but we convinced him, and here we are now. A lot less maneuvering, more tactics, and stuff like that. It's more intense. Yeah. yeah. A lot more intense. Sailing with each other, I guess, and the Sailing experience. Sailing with big boats. Action. Sailing fast. Yeah. We've been yeah, we've been first all the t all two races. Yeah. So far. So far. And our rate went higher, so we had to work extra hard today to keep our first place. So yeah, it's really fun. What do you guys want to do for a living when you grow up? I want to work on big boats. Yeah, work on big boats, do fishing. And there's a lot of cruising here, so you have more opportunities to work on bigger boats. There's a lot of good sailors. It's just yeah. free. During the course of last year, to now, I have been on another Volvo 70. I just did the Caribbean 600. It was a lovely experience. I will do it again, like six more times. <laughs> From here, I officially became a member of The Rock. I'm glad for that. So I'm leaving soon to go up there and start my big part in sailing. My end goal is basically to become a yacht skipper. Yeah, I see this as a career. Y'all catch me soon in big boat. We are viewer-supported sailing media. Please subscribe, share, like and check to alerts bell. After modest opening days on the Gulf of Saint-Tropez, two of the 52 Super Series top teams showed a marked return to form as the southerly breezes picked up on the second day of the 52 Super Series Saint-Tropez Sailing Week. Harm Müller German flagged platoon team podium finishes for the last five years and two times world champions had an inauspicious start to their season Wednesday, but they bounced back from a 16 points first day to be top scoring boat. So the fleet docking out from beautiful Saint-Tropez, the tensions of day one, well, it's hard to tell whether the tensions dropped or actually risen. Great test on the Gulf of Saint-Tropez.
Well, the second day for racing saw much better conditions. It was really about Platoon, though, coming back with a first, winning the first race, getting a third in the second race. Quantum Racing, the champions, uh, won the second race of the day and started to show some good form. First race, it was a win for Platoon. They round the top mark just behind Pat Preck, the French team leading at the top mark. And at the leeward gate, Platoon went round the right-hand side mark and they got away to win the race. Pat Preck getting through in second. What I felt in the beginning, we have the potential to be strong and that we show today. Second race, Platoon got closed out and had to restart. Quantum got out to the right along with Sled on the first beat and they were the first two round the top mark and they went on to be first and second. Today we felt better than we did yesterday and, and we hope to feel better tomorrow. So a good recovery for Platoon, make them the top scoring boat of the day, but Interlodge still just on top of the standings. Now ahead of Provezza, Interlodge on 16, Provezza 17, Allegra on 19 and that first and a third today. Take Platoon up to fourth place on 20 points. Brest France hosts the GWA Wingfoil European Championships, where there were 33 men and four women registered to compete in both the free fly slalom and surf freestyle disciplines. I'm Francesco Capuzzo, I come from Italy. My first time here in Brest for the European Championship from the Winfall Tour. I'm pretty happy to be here because I really like the place and we had a really nice weather as well. Bonjour, je m'appelle Flora Arsner. Aujourd'hui, on a lancé la première manche de race. Pour l'instant, ça se passe bien. Je suis devant, donc euh, on croise les doigts pour la suite. That's it for day number one here at the GWA Wingfoil and European Championship. We had a little bit of wind and we were able to get through five elimination of the women and through one complete elimination of the men. At the moment, it looks like Flora Asnir and Bastian Escoffet are on top of the overall rankings, but we will have to find out as there is a lot of action to come our way. Tomorrow's skippers meeting is going to be at 9.30. Will it be freestyle? Will it be slalom? We will soon find out. Make sure to tune in on all our social media channels to follow the action. Solid trade winds over 15 knots blessed the third day of Antigua Sailing Week. 
With racing now past the halfway stage, the action was as hot as the air temperature, with teams pulling out all the stops. Reggae in the Park race day was full on as sailors will wind down tonight for Reggae in the Park, followed by Lucky Eddie's Lay Day. Tanzania, skipper on the boat Rasaben, chartered from Dream Yacht Charters. I'm also from Tanzania, I'm a floating crew, I do what the captain tells me, not all the time but most of the time. Well we've travelled from one beautiful place to another beautiful place. We've been here now, this is our second week, cruise for a week, it's been close racing. The starts have been nice and competitive, that's one of my specialities. We've been surprised how close it is, I mean yesterday's uh, first race I think there was 20 seconds between four boats. We have a lot of racing in Tanzania, but different mixed fleets and cats and hobby cats and lasers. It's the first time we're on a big fleet of the same uh, boat. We're learning a lot as well from the committee boats, how they set up races internationally. So that's been a pleasure as well. Which we'll take back to Tanzania because, yeah, we've learned a lot. I think there's a lot of people out there who'd like to be part of this whole event. Don't have the skills or haven't had the training to go onto these big, beautiful boats. Um, so this is a great alternative and they feel part of it. The reasons to come, just the, the sailing quality, it's really good. The hospitality, it's just been fun. Oh, and the rum. Yeah. The rum's yes. Rum, rum, rum. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sailing on a Westley Consort KT, she's 29 foot built keeler. So I came over with the Ark and I've sailed uh, over 5,000 miles to get here. When I decided to do the Ark and, and that, I just thought, well, I'm definitely doing Antigua Sailing Week as well. So that's the aim, that's the goal. Let's get to Antigua, uh, but in company with the Ark. So there's a few Ark boats here as well. A bit of a family crew, the novices at sailing. So we're all learning together, basically. I've never raced round the Cairns before. This is the first time. So race one was completely new to me. And the club class system seems to be quite, quite generous for cruising sailors like myself. Purely the handicap system makes it work for me. I couldn't compete in a proper out and out race, but with club class, it's a really good opportunity to have a bit of racing in a cruising boat. I'm absolutely loving every minute of it. And I'll definitely come back, yeah. After a day on which the Gulf of Saint-Tropez offered up a strengthening sea breeze and beautiful spring sunshine, Ergen Imra's Turkish-flagged Preveza team lead the 52 Super Series Saint-Tropez Sailing Week by one single point ahead of Andy Soriano's almost equally consistent Allegri. Defending champions Quantum Racing powered by American Magic are up to third on the general classification. So day three of racing here in Saint-Tropez, we've had two decent days, most of the teams now have got themselves firing, getting some good results under their belts, much more chilled vibe around the race dock, let's go racing. Well Saint-Tropez dealing up a great day of racing, real champagne conditions, breeze up to probably 20 knots in the second race and super tight racing all the way through. First race will sled or closed out at the committee boat end of the line but actually managed to wriggle through get up the first beat and lead round the top mark. Prevets a second, Prevets to get through on the run, but it's uh, Sled coming through to win the first race. The wind actually picks up for the second race of the day. Looks like Sled are putting in a repeat performance. They're leading into the top mark on port to attack, but it's super close. There's a big raft up and Sled get caught on the inside. Allegra and Quantum Racing get clear. Quantum Racing win the race, Allegra is second, but it's Prevetsa still at the top of the table. 
managing points from here to uh, to the end is still early. We still have four races to go. It's just trying to get good stars, doing uh, good speed as we are doing, trying to um, nail the tactics. All of that is very easy. <laughs> and, and just uh, trying to hold it. So after six races, Prevets are leading on 25 points, second Allegra 26 points and third Quantum Racing powered by American Magic 27 points.